So if you're anything like me, when I started flying drones and I started hearing about the 107 certificate, I didn't know what the heck this really was. Is it useful? Does it really give me anything above being just a recreational pilot? Can I fly more places? Can I do more things? Really, what's the point? Well, today we're going to talk to an expert and answer those questions. Let's go! Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. Always appreciate it. It's good to see you. If this is your first time here, my name is Keith and this is Alien Drones. I do mostly drones, tech, photography, tips and tutorials, and industry news. And if that's something that's of interest to you, you might want to click that subscribe button. That'll let you know when there's new content that might be of interest to you. So as I alluded to in the intro, today we're going to talk about the 107 certificate and really if there's any benefit to having it versus being a straight recreational pilot. Now, of course, we all talk about making money, things like that, but is there anything more? And obviously, I'm not the only one who wants to know about the benefits of the 107, if it's worth it or not, because after every video, I ask you guys to go ahead and drop your comments in the video. And the recurring theme is things like, what does getting the 107 certificate do for me? What are the benefits? Is it really worth it? Why should I bother? What can I do with that that I can't do now? Well, you guys know how I roll, so I figured what better way to answer your questions than asking an expert. That being said, we are very fortunate to have Greg Reverdio from Pilot Institute with us today. Greg comes to us, one of the founders and lead instructors of Pilot Institute, and is probably one of the most qualified people I know to talk with us and has graciously agreed to give us some insight into the benefits of having your 107 versus just being a recreational pilot. So Greg, thank you very much for meeting with us today. We really do appreciate it. Well, you're very welcome, Keith. I, I watch your channel on a regular basis, so do the people on my team. So we're, uh, I'm excited to be here and answer any questions. I know there's a lot of confusion out there about part 107 and a, and a bunch of other things. Of course, excellent, excellent, thank you. Uh, so as I mentioned, I get a lot of questions in the comments of my video and emails, as I'm sure you do. So I thought I'd run through them. I'll just kind of rapid fire them at you. So first question is, uh, does having my 107 allow me to earn money with my videos different than if I'm a recreational flyer? Yeah, and this is uh, kind of always the biggest question that we get from people, right? Can I make money with my Part 107? Or actually, can I make money flying recreationally? Or how do I make money with my drone? Well, Part 107 allows you to do this. Uh, Part 107 is actually so much more than just making money. Making money is one of the things out there that you can do with Part 107. But really, the way that I like to look at it is Part 107 is anything that is not for recreational purposes. If you fly for recreational purposes, you have this little thing called USC 44809 where you can fly for fun and, uh, and everything else is governed by Part 107. So that includes flying for your church, for example. This is one we get a lot and I'm sure you do that too. I'm flying for a non-for-profit, okay? Non-for-profit, it doesn't matter because you're flying outside of the recreational rules, which means you automatically fall under Part 107. So yes, making money is part of Part 107, but it's really not the only thing. It covers you for doing a whole lot of different types of flying other than recreational flying. Makes sense, makes sense. That's always a big one. Uh, people think that if you're flying for money, that it's 107, anything else isn't. So that's a, that's a good distinction. Appreciate that. And I know you mentioned things like nonprofit organizations, for instance, but, and this is a question number two. My coach asked me to film the football game at homecoming, and we're going to put it on their Facebook page. I'm not making money. Uh, I'm just kind of donating my time, really, and the coach asked me to do it. Is that something that uh, 107 would offer me, or I can just be a recreational and do that too? Uh, that's a great question. And, and my question is going to always be, what is the intent of the flight? And that's just not my question. It's the FAA that questions and says, what is the intent of the flight? If the intent of the flight is anything other than recreational, then it falls under Part 107. So in the example you gave me, 
I'm gonna fly for, my coach asked me, my coach asked me, my, the bride and the groom asked me to do videos and photos. All of a sudden, it's no longer recreational because somebody else is asking you to do a task, right? So pretty much right away, it becomes part 107. So the intent of the flight is really what matters. Now, if you were flying your drone and decided that um, you wanted to go record your kid that's playing in that football game, now that's no longer the intent, is is now recreational. I'm, I'm recording my kid playing in this, uh, in this football game, then that's recreational. I can, I can use that footage. Now the tricky part is I'm out there, I'm flying recreationally, and all of a sudden I record that footage and then something happens that is pretty big, okay? I always use the example in my course where I say, you're filming your kid skiing down the slope and there's an avalanche that comes in and then you record that footage and it's, it's something that's pretty big, right? Well, you were recording for recreational purposes. Can you now sell this footage to the news media? Absolutely you can because the original intent of the flight was to fly for fun. So now you have this footage that you recorded for recreational purposes, but you can still monetize it because now the intent, the original intent was to get it for fun, for recreational purposes. So in which case, if it's a one-off, the FA is probably not going to worry about it. Now, if you do this repeatedly, eventually you create a pattern and then now we have an issue where the FA can go back and, and look at it. But the FA is really after making sure that we fly safely in the airspace. That's, that's really the bottom line. Hmm. That's a really interesting take on that, um, that you can sell it. And the pattern is a big deal too. So of course, if you're going to be doing those and the intent is such, got to have that 107. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. It's all about the intent. So, so uh, next one is, uh, if I have my 107, does it allow me to fly in more controlled or restricted airspace, even at night than if I'm a recreational pilot only? Yeah, that's uh, that. That's a two two part question. Can you fly in areas with a Part 107 where you cannot, as a recreational pilot? The answer is yes. Let's give you let's let's uh, let's use an example. You're flying near an airport, and that airport is limited to 100 feet because of lens, right? You have lens approval. You can fly up to 100 feet. Let's say you want to fly at 200 feet. This happens quite a bit every single day. As a recreational pilot, you are limited to 100 feet. There is no way for you to submit approval to fly above, uh, above 100 feet. As a Part 107 pilot, as a remote pilot, you have the ability to submit for approval to fly higher than the grid numbers. If you get to an area where there's a zero grid, for example, well, zero grid, you technically can't fly at all. As a recreational pilot, you can't fly there at all. As a Part 107, you can submit approval to get in there. That's a big difference. And then uh, the other part of your question was at night, and uh, that's always a confusing point. At night, as a recreational pilot, you can only fly in uncontrolled airspace or in airspace that does not re require approval from the FAA. So if you're in, class golf, or if you're in the middle of nowhere, there's no airport, then you can fly there at night. If you're near an airport in, in airspace that requires approval via lands or via the FAA drone zone, then all of a sudden you can't do that at night as a recreational pilot at the moment, at the moment. This is about to change. The FAA has said that they're about to change that process, but as we're recording this, you can't do that. As a part 107, you can. You can fly at night in controlled airspace and, uh, and, and go up to the grid number or above if you get approval to do that. Nice. That's an interesting distinction for sure. Uh, next question. Uh, any difference in flying over people? I saw a rule recently that came out that it's legal now, even for hobbyists. So why should I bother with my 107? Uh, that's a great question. And that's a, that's a big misconception out there. The rules for flying over people that were released at the, uh, the beginning of 2021 are only for part 107. They are hosted under part 107 and which means that you can only follow these rules if you are certified under part 107 as a remote pilot uh by the way i get a dollar every single time i say part 107 so you're going to hear me say that a lot <laughs> but uh so what that means is that you can't fly over people under recreational rules now the recreational rules are located under usc the us code 44809 and these rules are pretty simple they're pretty straightforward there's uh there's seven or eight of them that are highlighted in bullet points and they're pretty much to the point and nowhere in there does it allow you to fly over people so that rule is only under part 107 uh Flying over people, flying over moving vehicle, th those are kind of uh, linked together. So you will, at the moment, unless there is a change in regulation from the FAA, you'll never be able to fly over people and moving vehicles under recreational rules. Hmm. That's a good way to put that. So the next question is, 
Uh, can I fly over 400 feet if I have my 107? Oh, that's a, that's always a good one as well. Uh, yes, yes, you can fly over 400 feet AGL. Now we need to define AGL, above ground level. Um, at any time, if your drone is right here, right? The distance between the ground, the actual physical ground and your drone, that's AGL. Under recreational flying, that's the, that's the maximum altitude you'll ever be able to go. Under Part 107, there's a little piece of regulation that says uh, that if you're within 400 feet of a structure, okay, of a structure, then you have the ability to fly up to 400 feet on top of that structure as long as you stay within 400 feet of that object. So we're talking about a cell phone tower, we're talking about a building, we're talking about anything that's going to be man-made, that's going to be right here. And no, there's a discussion going on, a tree is not considered a structure in this case, uh, it's going to be something that's going to be man-made. And I know the FA doesn't define it and it's kind of an ongoing debate, but uh, this is something I don't want to argue with the FA if I get caught, right? <laughs> so um, as a recreational pilot it's 400 feet regardless of how close you are to an object that's where you are 400 feet agl as a part 107 you have more lead way to go a little bit higher in uncontrolled airspace nice so chalk one more up for uh, 107 nice yeah that's right yep uh so next one is uh can i fly beyond visual line of sight the bv loss uh, with the 107 versus recreational yeah, so BV loss at the moment is not really allowed for anyone except, I'll do a little exception. So you can get a waiver, the waiver to the regulation that says you can't go past beyond visual line of sight. And, um, and that waiver is not easy to get, but some people do get it. But you can get a waiver to go fly beyond visual line of sight under Part 117. Under USC 4409 recreational flying, there is no such waiver. There's no way to actually waive the regulation um, in, in USC 4409. Now, I do remember seeing something uh, with regard to remote ID that said that that was trying to, or in, in its intention was to be able to pave the way for BVLOS. So in that case, when remote ID comes out, is there in the future, I realize it's not now, as you mentioned, but in the future, is there a possibility that there'll be a benefit to a 107 that maybe could do BV loss beyond visual line of sight versus recreational if uh, the FAA kind of uh, makes good on what they're talking about? Yeah, for sure. Um, if you're interested in this, uh, the, the, the whole concept of flying beyond visual line of sight is explained in a, an FA document called uh, Concept of Operation 2.0. And it's about uh, unmanned traffic management, UTM. And they kind of explain the entire airspace and how they're going to manage the airspace. And in there, they talk about BV loss, beyond visual line of sight operation. And to get there, the FA needed to check a few boxes first. The first one being remote ID, which we have now in the books, right? Even though it's not in place just yet. Uh, we have uh, Lance authorization. So the next thing that the FA is working on right now is BV loss. My expectation, this is just me making this up, but in the next year or two, we will see the FA releasing new regulation for BV loss. Now, I'm not gonna say that you're gonna be able to pull out your Mavic uh, 2 or your Mavic 3 and then be able to fly beyond visual line of sight right away. But I think it's going to become more routine and easier to accomplish as long as you meet certain requirements. And uh, and like I said, I, I don't think it's going to be a, a free for all that we'll be able to just fly beyond visual line of sight, but it's going to be, I think, a little bit easier. Okay, super. They're asking, can I still fly recreationally if I'm 107? If I get 107, that means I always have to fly commercially, quote unquote. Uh, I can't fly for fun only anymore. Is this true? And is there a benefit to having the 107 to fly recreationally? Yep. So to answer that question, we have to go back to the two different sets of rules that we have to fly in the U.S., right? You can fly under USC 44809 or you can follow the rules in Part 107. When you become Part 107 certified, you can fly under either set of rules. So you pick when you take off. If, you, if today I want to go take pictures of my kid and I don't want to follow all the rules under Part 107 because it's pretty complex, I can decide to conduct this flight under USC 44809. And, um, and if I want to fly for commercial purposes and I want to make money, then I can switch to Part 107. But to answer your question, you can conduct any kind of flights under Part 107, including flights for fun, flights for recreational purposes. It's good, good to know. Uh, so that's the last question I have from the viewers, but what I wanted to do is mention a couple of things as well, just from my personal experience uh, that I found were benefits, and they're not as tangible as some of the great things that Greg brought up, but 
Uh, there are a few things that I just wanted to mention that you don't really probably see written down somewhere, but in my experience uh, are a benefit. Of course, it, it depends upon the person, but uh, for one thing, it allows me when I'm flying because uh, by the nature of the 107, not only do you have to take, uh, you know, study, take a test, you end up doing a lot more due diligence for your normal flights. You go out, you check out the area, you know, you do logs and things just to make sure that you're, uh, you know, following all the 107 requirements. And that by itself gives me confidence. Now, I have a lot of history of flying as recreational before I became 107 as well. And I was kind of squeamish because if somebody were to walk up, whether it would be law enforcement, it has happened a couple times to me, uh, or just a regular person, either, uh, you know, grandma and grandpa walking out and they're curious. Uh, the first thing they want to tell you is their knowledge of how, you know, you can't fly a drone around here. That's illegal kind of a stuff, right? I mean, that's just they want to impart their knowledge and depends upon their background and their bias. But in that situation, I feel much more confident that you're not, oh, gee, somebody's walking up. I got to land and run the other way because I'm not sure. Uh, you're pretty confident. So by the nature of it, uh, I, I really do enjoy that. So also uh, one of the things uh, that I found is uh, I love to post videos, whether it's, uh, you know, going to a family reunion and, uh, you know, posting people that I haven't seen in a long time. Everybody loves a drone. And for me now, because again, I have my 107, that I never really worry about, oh, was that intent to kind of put it out there so that people could see it? And did it kind of fall into 107? And I planned on posting it now because, you know, I wanted people to see it. Did it fall into 107 or not? I really don't have that anxiety if, oh, geez, am I going to get caught? Because I'm already doing it legally. I am 107 and, and it doesn't really matter. Uh, so, Greg, uh, have you had any of these similar experiences, uh, benefits, things like that, that uh, you want to share with us? Yeah, actually, there's a great one. We we have a student, and and they're pretty popular. They have a, a traveling channel. They're called Chris and Sarah, and uh, I've seen and that they, channel. Yes, you've seen that channel, and they're they're absolutely out, outstanding, and they fly drones, and. Um, and they get reported to the FAA. And now this is the second time that they get reported. Now the first time they get reported, um, well, it happened that they, did, they didn't know the rules and they weren't part 107 and they were posting stuff on their channel that is monetized and the FAA called them and said, well, we got a report uh, somebody that watched the video reported them to the FA and he picked up the phone and then he was really stressing out because, and he made a full video about it explaining the, the whole process. He had got resolved. He got his part 107, actually used us, got, got the part 107. And then a couple of weeks ago, he got reported again for flying in an area. But this time was very different. Just like what you said, he picked up the phone. It was the FAA inspector. Now all of a sudden he says, hey, you know what? I'm part, cert I'm part 107 certified. And then the FAA inspector said, okay, that's all I needed to know. Check the box hang up the phone call and then that was it he was done so the first time he was afraid because they were the fa was talking about a hundred thousand dollar fine for every flight that they had conducted now obviously this probably would have never gone to that level but that really scared them and basically they said okay we're getting the license we want to do this legally we just didn't know and they didn't know and then and then again the second phone call a breeze and and now he knows because he knows the regulation he said i know where i was flying i was flying here it's not in a national park which they were claiming it was and uh, he said okay that's it two minute phone call hang up and then done so that to me is a big peace of mind that you don't have to worry about for the price quite frankly it's a small small investment Oh, I agree. That's a great, that's a great example. Yeah, I've ha I have seen their channel and I did see uh, the video where they actually got turned in and they talked about that too. So yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, and again, I can see that again, it does give you a lot of anxiety, you know, when you see the caller ID and it says FAA gov or something like that on it. Yeah, I would think that would make me a little nervous, certainly, <laughs> if I certainly didn't know if I didn't know what I was doing, no doubt about it. Well, there's really a lot of great information. And honestly, uh, I didn't know uh, that there were so many benefits when I first started the 107. I just kind of, you know, wanted to learn and things, but there's a lot of good information here, obviously. So I really appreciate uh, all that info, Craig. Uh, so I imagine uh, there are a lot of people right now watching that are thinking, you know, I definitely should get into this because this stuff really makes sense. But, you know, where do I even start? It's a big deal. It's a test, whatever. You know, well, you guys have come to the right place because Greg is here to make it really easy for you. Uh, he has a course and an entire setup on a website that'll allow you to pass and they guarantee you to pass. And Alien Drones will even get you a discount on this course as well. So Greg, if you wouldn't mind, uh, if you'd explain a little bit uh, to the viewers about how Pilot Institute can help with this, you know, what the costs are, 
maybe go through a little bit about the resources that are there as well, you know, paid or not, and all the free stuff you had, because I think there's a lot of stuff there as well. Just kind of give the uh, viewers an idea, what can we do, how do we get started, and, and what's uh, what does it entail? Yeah, you bet. So, you know, to, to get the part 107, you need to pass a written exam. It's a 60 question exam. Uh, you have uh, two hours to complete it. And it's a variety of topic. There's actually there's actually quite a few topics that you need to be knowledgeable about. And in order to study for this, you need to get a 70% in order to pass the exam. If you get under 70, you're you're done for two weeks, you have to restudy and, and then you have to repay for the exam fee, which is $175. So you want to you want to go ready. OK, now there's two routes and, and I want to give you both routes because I think it's the right thing to do. You can self study. The FAA has some publications available that you can look at. There is some material available online on YouTube for free. Um, that works well if you have that kind of brain where you can digest the information and do all this. What we've done on our side, I, I've been doing this for 20 years. I've been in the flight training industry for 20 years. I, I'm a commercial pilot. I'm a flight instructor. I've been teaching people how to fly pretty much my whole life. So we've created a course that is organized to teach you not only what you need to pass for the test, okay? Passing the test is one thing. Being proficient is something else. So what I've done is we've created a program that actually makes you proficient. It's much longer than anybody else out there for a specific reason, because I, I give you real life examples. I teach you how to use the facility map, which believe it or not, is not on the exam, but we teach you how to do it in the course. Um, we give you uh, maneuvers so you can learn how to fly your drone. So we have 50 maneuvers that you can use to practice. That's all part of the course. Obviously, we give you support if you have questions, and there's always questions. We have interactive uh, 3D models, so you can actually see the airspace in 3D. You can move around yourself on the map, click on buttons, and the airspace builds up in 3D, which is really, really cool. So we've, we've spent a lot of time. We have uh, flashcard apps that can help you. Uh, you have unlimited practice exam at the end. Uh, we even have an audio review that you can use in your car. So you've watched this whole chapter and then you're driving to work and you just want to remind, you know, re remember, you can listen to this like a podcast and listen to the audio review at the end of the course. So there's a ton of things that we've included in the course to, to make you successful. Uh, the, the funny thing is we've trained, like I said, f close to 40,000 people now, and uh, we've had about 10 failures total uh, in the course. And... Um, We've actually had seven times more people getting a perfect score on the exam than we've had people failing the exam. As a matter of fact, he, right here in, my, in, uh, in, our, uh, in our office, we have a board we'll call the Hall of Fame. And every time you uh, get a perfect score, we print a medallion and we put it on the, uh, on the board for the Hall of Fame. So uh, we're very proud of our students and what they accomplish. I, I want to believe that they're uh, above average when they graduate because they understand all of this and, and want to fly the right way rather than just getting a grade on an exam. So I'll, I'll stop talking. This is kind of my, my sales pitch, if you want to call it that. But I do believe that we need to have people out there that uh, want to fly safely and we need to give them the knowledge to do so. So that's, that's what we do. Okay. Well, you know, one thing, uh, I, I never really talk about it very much uh, how I got there, but I did when I first uh, started, uh, you know, a few years ago, there was a few courses around, but uh, I didn't really think about it. You know, I just self-studied. Now, again, this is just my perspective, but I thought it was really hard because uh, I, I searched everywhere. And like everybody, you know, you pull up different videos, people are talking about it, you find different uh, websites. The difficulty I found is I didn't know what to study. That's and right. I didn't know, am I studying a bunch of stuff that's irrelevant? I look and I see things talking about uh, how clouds form. Well, this can't be an FAA thing that's gonna be on a test. I mean, that must yep. just be irrelevant stuff. Uh, talking about these maps, they make no sense to me. So I didn't know. So I'm sure that I really overstudied because I just didn't know. Now, I think I got a 94 if I remember right. So I didn't get That's a perfect really score, sorry. But but uh, I didn't know. So that was very difficult. And then there was a few places that did offer a few sample test questions so I could at least try and see what they would look like. But, you know, I didn't know. Are they current? Is that old? Have they been replaced? Right. Is this not relevant? So yeah. I didn't know. Now, I did it that way. But uh, honestly, you know, for, for the price that, uh, you know, this course is at Pilot Institute. And, you know, with a discount on it, uh, I would have done that in a heartbeat. Had I known then what I know now, I would have done a course like that. Because, uh, again, just not knowing what to study for the little bit of time. I mean, I, I studied hard for months because I just didn't know. And, uh, you know, save yourself some time. I think really, save your you, know, you yeah. guys know on this channel, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to recommend something that I don't think is going to be useful to you guys or so, uh, you know, I would I would certainly check it out because it's going to save you a lot in the long, long run. Well, you know, I, my, my favorite saying is you don't know what you don't know. 
and and when you get into this to study, you you may think that you've studied everything, and all of a sudden there's something new. You mentioned being current. Um, we updated our course two months or three months actually at the end of January for the April update in 2021 because the FA was going to put out all the new stuff out there. We were the first class online to update it because well because we spent an entire month re-recording videos and making sure everything was up to date. And and that you don't get in a YouTube video, right? You can watch a YouTube video from three years ago, four years ago, things have changed. And also you don't know who's teaching these topics. What is their background? I can tell you, I've been doing this at the university level. I've been teaching aviation my whole life. I like to think that I know what I'm talking about. So when I teach you something, I like to know that it's correct, right? Well, when I watch something on YouTube, I don't know if that information is correct or not, what that person's background is. So you have to do some research. And like you said, saving time, you know, you don't have to research all that information. We did that for you. We make sure that it meets the, uh, the airman certification standards for the FAA and the course contains all the information that you need. So that's again, that's uh, yeah. So, a lot of great information here. I really do appreciate it, Greg. I, I thank you very much. Uh, you know, make sure you guys take a minute and go check uh, his site out. I'll put the information and I'll put some links down below here so you guys can go check out the site because, of course, as he mentioned, a lot of information on there, not only about the 107, but a lot of free things and navigation and stuff too. So make sure to go take a look. Uh, it'll be worth your while. Uh, so with that, I think I'm going to leave it here today. I know there are some things we probably missed, I'm sure. And there'll be new things, again, just like you mentioned, uh, that maybe things come up in the future. And of course, I'd like to keep in touch if you wouldn't mind. And I'd have you back on the channel if there's things we can go over. And that way we can uh, share it all with the viewers, uh, if that makes sense for you. Absolutely. Always happy to help and answer any questions. So, Fantastic. Awesome. Well, I will take you up on that sometime, I'm sure. So thanks again for your time, Greg. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to our next discussion for sure. You got it. Boy, was that a lot of great information. And what about Greg? I mean, what a knowledgeable guy. And obviously he loves the industry as much as you and I do. So if you have questions on anything we talked about today, you know, make sure you put them in the comments because as I mentioned, I do read all your comments. And also be sure to go check out the Pilot Institute site because as I mentioned, uh, you can look into the 107 course, but even if that's not in the cards for you, there's a lot of free information and tutorials. So I'll put the links in the description there so you can go take a look at those as well. Don't forget the Alien Drones discount code is down there below. That gives you a hundred bucks off the course. So, I mean, it really is a steal. So that's all I have for you guys today. So I hope it was useful to you as always. And if so, I really do appreciate that like. And of course, make sure you tick that subscribe if you're not already. That way you'll be informed about new items that pop up right as they come up. As always, I do appreciate you guys' time and that you made it this far into the video. So until next time and next video, good flying.